Suppose I happen to have a circuit and the circuit looks like this. Voltage source, a resistor, a resistor comes down. I have a node A, I have a node B. And then over here, a resistor, a resistor, and B. So I'm going to make this R1, R2, R3, and R4. And this will be a 20 volt source, let's say. And then somewhere down here, I will have a V, I, R for R1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, can you see the circuit clearly? Can you see my chart at the bottom clearly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Okay, excellent. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to make my R1 560 ohms. I'm going to make my R2 980 ohms. I'm going to make my R3 1.2 kilo ohms. And I'm going to make my R4 um, 330 ohms. Is the writing clear on your screen? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put these up here also. 560 ohms. 980 ohms. 1.2 kilo ohms. And 330 ohms. And then fill this in. Uh, there's a total here. Total, 20 volts. Move this paper up a little bit. Like that. Okay. So, pull out the handy dandy calculator. And how many of you have the confidence to be able to say that they have our total already? And then reciprocal plus Don't shout out the answer. So let me do a uh, a check. So Izar, do you have an do you have an R total already? Yes or no? If you don't, not to worry because I haven't really had a whole lot of time to explain this type of circuit to any of you. But Izar, do you happen to have an R total yet? No. Oh, it's all right. Ivan, do you happen to have an R total yet? Not yet. You do? Okay. Oh, not yet. Okay. Victor, do you happen to have an R total yet? 
Negative. Okay, how about Edwin? No. Uh, how about Gerardo? No, still working on it. Okay, all right. I'll show you a fast way to do this. Brandon? I do. Okay, give me uh, the first digit. You said for our total, right? Yep. Um, six? First digit. First digit. Six. Six. First digit's a six? No, it won't work. Darn it. It's okay. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I could be wrong too, but let, 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 okay. Let me explain to you how we're, we're going to work this. The approach is, is, is very fast and easy. This is one of several different kinds of circuits. This is a very popular circuit. This one is defined as what we call a parallel series. Okay. It's not a series parallel. Um, I'm sorry. Let me write down. It, it, it's not a series parallel. It's a parallel series. And the reason why it's a se parallel series is this. From the voltage source, if we look at the voltage source, if we come out the neg lead, we hit a node, and the node is identified as B, yes? There are no series elements between this negative plate and point B. No series elements whatsoever. What happens at point B? The circuit splits. So it looks like we have multiple paths if we look at the bottom of the circuit. Are we in agreement there? Mm -hmm. If you look at the top of the circuit, the positive plate to point A, there is only a bare wire going to point A. There is no series element, no, no E's, no diodes, no resistors, nothing between the positive plate and point A. Once we hit point A, the circuit splits again. That says it's not a series circuit. First and foremost, not series. There's no part of series that belongs in the first part of the name of the circuit. It is, however, a parallel circuit that has series elements in the branches. Remember, the nickname for a series circuit is called string. The, the nickname for a um, parallel circuit is called a bank. And the bank is made up of branches. And I have how many branches in this circuit? Two branches. Each branch has how many resistors in it? Two resistors. What is the relationship of the two resistors? They are in series. So the simple solution for this particular guy is to do what we call a redraw. So we're going to redraw this. So if we redraw this, we will have our voltage source. It stays exactly where it was. We will go to a point A. We will go to a point B. And we will have a branch coming down. We will have a branch coming down. We will have another branch coming down and another branch coming down to here. We will, however, replace the two series with resistors with something we put in between. We can combine this. We will call this an REQ1. And do the same over here. This will be an REQ2. And what is this REQ? REQ stands for equivalent resistance, equivalent R, meaning REQ1 was the combined ohms of 560 in series with 980. We can clearly see they're in series, yes? There's only one current path between them. How do you find the total of resistors that are in series. Don't we simply add those? Yes. Okay. So when you go to add, go ahead and confirm this on your calculator, add 560 plus 980, that first branch should have 1.54 kilo ohms. Yes? yes? In other words, if I write this out in full, 1540, 1540 ohms. Yes? And then now take a look at the second branch. The second branch is one it has two resistors that are in series, and as they are in series, they add to give us REQ2. So I have 1.2 K ohms plus 330. That will add to become 1,530 ohms, or 1.53 kilo ohms. Yes? Are we good with that so far? Yes. So have we taken a four-resistor circuit and reduced it to a two-resistor circuit? This is the, and what is the name of the process, gentlemen? The name of the process is called redrawing. 
What is the purpose of redrawing? To simplify. Okay, that's the purpose of drawing is to simplify. So that being said, now we can clearly see why we call this a parallel series circuit, because fundamentally, once we get this down to two resistors, this is nothing but a very simple, basic parallel circuit that had series elements in them. Therefore, the name is correct in calling this a parallel series circuit. Are we good with this so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. All right, so now what we're going to do is this. We're going to calculate an R total based on these two guys. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can use reciprocal method, which is very easy, or we can use a shortcut. Um, and uh, let's just go ahead and use the, the parallel method for right now. So I have 1540. So what I'm going to do, my calculator is do 1540 reciprocal, and then add that to 1530 reciprocal equals reciprocal and equals. So my first digit is a seven, yes? It works out to be 700 and change. Could you all calculate that, please? Yeah, 760. Uh, and change. We want that. We want all those. Di we want. We need the digits all the way down to two digits after the decimal point. So I'll uh, start in sequence. Izar, do you have that calculation? Not yet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ephraim, do you have that calculation? Ephraim. Uh, let me check the chat. Final R total, no. I think you did. Yeah, Ephraim, yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, yeah, so please follow along this uh, explanation. So to do this calculation, uh, let me write out the, the, the keystroke sequence on your calculators. It would be, if I start over here, 1540 and you hit your X negative one reciprocal key, and then you hit plus. Then you do 1530, hit your X negative one key, and then hit equals, and then hit your X negative one key again, and hit equals one more time. And if you do so, you should end up with the exactly the same answer as, uh, Victor, do you have the uh, final calculus? Negative. Okay, follow this keystroke sequence and see if you can generate it. Edwin, do you have the uh, calculated R total? No, not yet. Okay, then follow that keystroke sequence. Uh, Ger Gerardo, do you have the uh, total? Uh, not yet. Okay, Brandon. Yes. You recalculated and this time it does not start with the six, right? Sorry, I start with a seven. Cool. <laughs> what are my last four, two digits after the decimal point, Brandon? The last two? Uh, yeah, but, uh, after the decimal point. Four and nine. Good. Okay, hang tight. We'll let the rest of our classmates catch up because I'm not going to write the number down for people to copy. They'll all copy and they'll figure it out later. No, we don't do that. <laughs> I want you to figure it out now while, while you have, uh, while we have each other. <clears throat> Is anybody having any trouble finding this reciprocal key, the X negative one? On some of your calculators, it might be a uh, second function. So look at that function very carefully. Other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. You might see it also shown this way on some calculators. It might be shown as a one over X. Okay. So these are, these are the same type of button. The X negative one is the same as a one over X. So if your calculator has an X one over X button instead of X negative one, that might help you solve this. 
So back to you, Izar. Do you have a total for me yet? I think he just found his button. Ivan, do you have a total for me yet? Yeah, I got one. Okay, what do you got? Um, did you just want me to say this, the whole thing? Yeah, sure. That's uh, 767 point. Point? Oh, very good. All right, Victor? Yes, exactly the same. Okay, Edwin? <clears throat> yeah, I got the answer. Okay, Gerardo, what do you have? Same. Good. Okay, so it is 767.49 ohms. And that's what we'll fill in on the bottom. So we still have, <clears throat> let's see, there's three columns, five rows. There's 15 cells to fill in on this particular analysis. We are getting there. So what would be the next thing that we would be doing in this analysis? What would be the appropriate next step? Anybody? Uh, we can calculate for I. Good, all right. And so for calculating for I, presumably this I, since you have a V over here and you have an R over here, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> So, cool. All right, so Edwin, do you have a current for us? <clears throat> yeah. Could you read out your current value, please? Uh, not yet. Uh, I'm going to get it in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, Eduardo, do you have a current value for us yet? One second. Okay. Do you mean I total? I total, yes. I get 26.05 of zero six. There you go. That Okay, that would be correct. So this would be. <clears throat> I get a yeah, twenty six point oh five milliamps. Uh, it won't be oh five. Would oh five would not be what you put on your paper. Twenty six point zero six milliamps. Now let me redo this with the rounded off answer, and I'll let's see if I take that back or not. 49 second W negative three. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, even if I even if I use this rounded off answer, your second digit here must be a six because the your calculated answer shows as being twenty point zero five eight nine seven. So remember, if we're rounding to this second digit right here. You have to look at the third digit, and if that third digit is five or greater than five, you have to increment this by one. That's a six here, sorry. So instead of 20, 26.05, it would become 26.06. .06. Are we clear on how to round properly on that, everybody? Yep. Cool, all right. Now, this is exciting. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this in. Um, so our RT, we said, was 767.49 ohms. And then we have an IT. We have an IT here of 26.06 milliamps. All right, well, this is good information. So what do we do with this? My goodness, where do we go from here? <laughs> Would be the question. Let me get this up a little higher so we can see more of this particular piece of paper. And move this all back so we shed a little more light on this. Move this out of the way. We get a little more light. Hey, everybody see my paper better now? Yes, sir. Cool. Yes. All right. So 
where do we go from here? We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We still have eight more cells to figure out. What would we okay. do? Uh, if we, if we on found on one current, on if we found our currents. REQ1 and REQ2's uh, current. And how would we find REQ1 and REQ2's current? Current should be equal, shouldn't it, for both? The current should be equal for both. Why would the current be equal for both? That's a, that, that, and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm asking for a logic. Why would your current be equal for both? Wouldn't wouldn't it they be different because they have different resistance? So they'll be right rationed it differently. That would be a correct observation. That would be correct. These are not the same ohms, although they're very close. They're not the same ohms, so there should be slight difference between them. But because they are so close to each other, the current would be very close to being the same. So both of you are correct. Just just a, as a, you know, with touching the calculator, your gut tells you, well, if I've got 1,540 ohms here and I've got 1,530 ohms here, whatever current happens, pretty much splits between them. And I have, what, 26.06 milliamps going through the entire circuit. It looks like I might have 13 and change milliamps here, 13 and change milliamps here. That's a very, very good. I'll do wireless ones better. I'm sorry? Who made what comment? Okay, I just wanted to make sure you, that, that I didn't miss a comment. Um, and, and we'll be happy to address those. So what's the fastest way to calculate? This is a couple of different ways we can do this calculation. What's the fastest way to calculate uh, the branch currents? How much current goes here and how much current goes here? How does that 26.06 .06 milliamp split between those two? Uh, Current division? What an approach. What's that? C current division? Current divider formula. Could we apply current divider formula? And if you remember, your I, I'll write it up here, IRX is equal to the value of RX, uh, RT over RX times I total. So it's R total over Rx times I total. Yes, you could do current divider. That is one method. Who's got another method? It's a good method. There's nothing wrong with that. Anybody else got any other ideas? Okay, the simplest way to do things. This is how many volts on the source? Yes. 20 volts, right? Yes. And these are parallel. What is the same in a parallel circuit? Isn't this 20 volts from A? Isn't the 20 volts across this one resistor as well as across this one resistor? Isn't 20 volts found across REQ1 and the same 20 volts is found across REQ2? Is that right or wrong? Yes. So the simplest way is, yes, you can do current divider, which is good you know, button pushing on your calculator, but I'm trying to reduce the number of buttons that you're pushing on your calculator to make it uh, the, the, the process uh, smarter, not harder. And so all I'm suggesting to you is this, since we know that we have a parallel circuit here, couldn't we just take the 20 volts and divide by these ohms to get the current? Couldn't we take the 20 volts, divide by these ohms and get that branch current and be done with it? Yes, and that's the simplest way to do it. I, I, would, I would vote for that. So that being said, I'm gonna light up the calculator and let's go ahead and take 20 and divide by, what do I have here? 1540, right? Not rounded about that answer. That is a solid added number. So everybody take 20, divide by 1540. And what is your branch current there, my friends? 12.98 million, I mean. Uh, million. Are we rounding errors again, my friends? 12.99. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, <laughs> right. <laughs> So the first branch, the first branch has 12.99 milliamps. Yes? Right, yeah. All right. Now let's, now let's do the second branch. Take 20 and divide by 1530. And how much current is on the second branch, my friends? Uh, 
13.07 milli. 13.07 milliamps. Milliamps. Okay. And I've written them on this particular redraw, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now that you have these branch currents, that's nice. What do you do with those? Uh, Where do we go from here? You put them respectively in the uh, the chart. Oh, okay, but which one goes where? Uh, REQ1 and REQ2 do not exist on this chart. Right, right, right. So what do I put where? Who's got a suggestion? Well. Uh, Victor here. Divide. Victor. Yeah. Yes, Victor. Go, go divide. for it. Yeah, divide the current for each individual, uh, I don't know, for REQ. REQ1 is 560 ohms and plus 980 ohms. Here? Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right, Victor. This, oops, sorry, I moved the camera. Back. All right. So this branch current of 12.99 milliamps flows through the first EQ branch. The first EQ branch was made up of, if we go back to the original circuit, 560 in series with 980. So this branch current of 12.99, which flows through this REQ1, flows through each of these individual resistors of this first branch. I have 12.99 milliamps in that first branch. So after you identify and understand that, this 12.99 milliamps is the current through R1 and is also the current through R2. So now on my chart, this is where I can fill in the 12.99 milliamps, 12.99 milliamps right here, which means I can do the same with REQ's current, yes? REQ2's current was 1307, right? Milliamps, and the REQ2 was that made up of R3 series with R4. What's the same in a series circuit? Current is the same. So whatever current flows through this branch of REQ2 is the same current that flows through these pair of resistors. So I must have 13.0, what do we say, 7 milliamps flowing in this circuit, which means on the chart I can fill in 13.07 milliamps. 13.07 milliamps yes mm -hmm. wow the rest of this is pretty straightforward right yeah because what do i do for for vr1 what do i find how do i find this voltage here ohm's law ohm's law exactly i'm going to multiply this times this in order to get this and so let's go ahead do those calculations now and i'll call you out individually for the answers so everybody make these calculations in silence So I'm going to start with VR1. So with VR1, Ephraim, do you have the value for VR1? Okay. Uh, Ivan, do you have the value for VR1? Yeah, I got, got 7.27. Excellent work. Correct. So 7.27 is the voltage here when I multiply this current times these ohms. Okay, I'm looking for VR2. So VR2, Brandon, do you have the value for VR2? Yes, sir. Uh, 
12.73. 12.73 volts is correct when I multiply 12.99 milliamps times the 980 ohms. I'm looking for VR3. Uh, Edwin, do you have VR3? Not yet, sir. That's all right. Uh, Gerardo, do you have VR3? I have uh, 15.68 volts. Okay. Since I use memory, we can be a hundredth of a decimal place off. It works out to 15.69 volts. I'll accept your 15.68. Nothing's wrong with that at all. Okay. Thank you. Victor, do you have VR4? Yeah, I hope to be right. Have, there's, <laughs> four sure, point five eight. Off. What's that? Four point five eight. Four point fifty eight. Yes. I think that's that's going to be a little off. Thirteen oh seven. You're close. You're close. But thirteen oh seven milliamps times three thirty. So thirteen point oh three seven. Yeah, I got three fifty here. Sorry. Ah, ha, 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 ha. As well. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you were close. So, yeah, once you correct it to, with the three thumbs, you should be okay. Euphrain, do you have this answer for us now? VR4? 4313. 4.31 uh, volts is correct there, Victor. Very nice. So, we filled in the complete VIR chart, yes? Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. All right, so the lesson again, to, to do this type of analysis, you have a circuit and you look at it from this perspective. I say we look at it with the, with, here's the voltage source, here's the part that is farthest away from the voltage source. Look at it from this point, looking back in, what do you see on this wire? On this wire, we see two resistors. What is their relationship they are? in series. So we can put those two that are in series and make them into REQ number two. If we follow the wire to this node, we see another wire and it has two resistors and they are also in series. So we can combine those two, they become REQ number one. We reduce the four resistors down to two resistors and with two resistors we realize that they are easily calculated in parallel for a total resistance the total resistance of 767.49 ohms, fill in our chart, find I total, and then do the rest of the analysis. And the, the, the voltage is the last thing we do over here for this particular analysis. We go for the branch currents. We know that in a parallel circuit, 20 volts is in parallel with this resistor, in parallel with this equivalent resistor. So that 20 volts is found here and here. We use Ohm's law to calculate the current. The branch current here worked out to be 12.99. If you took the time to use, if you took the time to use current divider formula, you would very well easily end up with the same current. Uh, we used Ohm's law of 20 volts divided uh, across 1530 ohms, calculated 13.07 milliamps. Again, if you use current divider, you would end up with the same current. Once you find the branch currents, you take those branch currents, you bring them back to the original circuit. The original circuit for this branch that had 1299 milliamps was through two resistors. So that 12.99 milliamps can be transferred onto your chart here and here. The 1307 milliamps transferred onto your chart here and here. And then Ohm's law is the rest of the story. So if you see a worksheet on several of these types of exercises, do you feel you have the confidence now to be able to do this particular chart with 99.99% uh, accuracy? Like a pack of Germex, yes. yes. Only if I round up. <laughs> Only if you, yes, you gotta remember to round properly. Let's just say round properly, because sometimes you, you, when you round, you, the, the, the number stays the same, but that, that, that's all good. That's all part of our learning experience. And by raise of hands uh, or by affirmation, how many of you on your calculators have a one over X key? I do, Victor. Victor does. And how many of you have the reciprocal key, the X negative one? I do. I do. Okay, most everybody else. All right, so Victor, you just have to remember, when I write down one over, one, X negative one, you're gonna use the one over X key, yes? Uh, I, I have both. 
Oh, yeah. Bo wow. How special you are. Wow. Fancy calculator. All right. So uh, he here's the thing. <clears throat> when you do this particular analysis, uh, the task that I haven't presented to you all yet, in addition to this this week, you will get additional worksheets on something very similar to this exercise. But you will also be asked to verify these numbers by going on Tina. By going on Tina and building this circuit this way, and if you pop in all the numbers and you hook up all the uh, the voltage, uh, the, the the digital multimeters, and hook up ammeters correctly. Uh, you will be able to see all the numbers verified here uh, using Tina. So that would be the follow-up exercise that I have not yet assigned to you all. Any questions on this, my friends? No, sir. All right.